In this presentation, we will discuss some more gate problems on equivalence relations. So let's get started. Here is problem 1. Let R1 and R2 be two equivalence relations on a set. Okay. So R1 and R2 are defined on a particular set. Consider the following assertions. R1 union R2 is an equivalence relation. R1 intersection R2 is an equivalence relation. Which of the following is correct? You have to identify the correct option out of these options. Okay. This question has been asked in gate 1998. I would encourage you to pause the video for a while and try to answer this question on your own. I hope you are done. Okay, let's move on to the solution. It is given that R1 and R2 are equivalence relations on a particular set. Okay. We have to consider the following assertions. R1 union R2 is an equivalence relation. R1 intersection R2 is an equivalence relation. Now we have to identify which of these assertions or maybe both of the assertions are true, right? If R1 and R2 are equivalence relations on a particular set, let's say A, then R1 union R2 is not an equivalence relation, let me tell you, and R1 intersection R2 is an equivalence relation. We will identify them one by one. Why it is the case that R1 intersection R2 is an equivalence relation and R1 union R2 is not an equivalence relation and why option C is the correct option. That is, assertion 2 is true, but assertion 1 is not true. That is, R1 intersection R2 is an equivalence relation and R1 union R2 is not an equivalence relation. Let's identify that. First, we will prove that R1 intersection R2 is an equivalence relation. Okay? Let's prove this. R1 intersection R2 is an equivalence relation. R1 and R2 are equivalence relations defined on set A. This means R1 and R2 are reflexive, symmetric and transitive. It is already given in the question that R1 and R2 are equivalence relations defined on set A, right? This means R1 and R2 are reflexive, symmetric and transitive. We have to prove the following, that is R1 intersection R2 is reflexive, R1 intersection R2 is symmetric and R1 intersection R2 is transitive. Let's prove all of these one by one. First, we will prove that R1 intersection R2 is reflexive. We know that R1 and R2 are equivalence relations, right? And thus, they are reflexive. Isn't that so? According to reflexivity, for all x belong to A, x, x must belong to R, right? Now, here in this case, we know that R1 and R2 are equivalence relations. Therefore, they are reflexive relations, right? This means for all x belong to A, x, x must belong to R1 and x, x must belong to R2. This implies that x, x must belong to R1 intersection R2. Isn't that so? You are saying that x, x belong to R1 and x, x belong to R2. This means x, x must belong to R1 and R2. That is R1 intersection R2. Therefore, it is clear that R1 intersection R2 is reflexive. Right? Now, let's prove why R1 intersection R2 is symmetric. For this, we know that R1 and R2 are symmetric, right? Because they are equivalence relations. According to symmetry definition, for all x, y belong to A, x, y belong to R implies y, x belong to R. Let's say that x, y belong to R1 intersection R2. Because we want to prove that if x, y belong to R1 intersection R2, then y, x must also belong to R1 intersection R2. From this statement, we will try to prove that y, x also belong to R1 intersection R2. Okay? Let's say that x, y belong to R1 intersection R2. This means x, y belong to R1 and x, y belong to R2. Right? We know that R1 and R2 are equivalence relations and therefore R1 and R2 are symmetric. So it is clear that y, x also belong to R1 and y, x also belong to R2. Right? If y, x belong to R1 and y, x belong to R2, then obviously we can say y, x belong to R1 intersection R2. Isn't that so? Therefore, if x, y belong to R1 intersection R2, then y, x also belong to R1 intersection R2. Hence, it is clear that R1 intersection R2 is symmetric. Isn't that so? Now, let's just try to prove why it is the case that R1 intersection R2 is transitive. We already know that according to transitivity, for all x, y, z belong to set A, x, y belong to R and y, z belong to R implies x, z belong to R. 
Let's consider x comma y belong to R1 intersection R2 and y comma z belong to R1 intersection R2 because we want to prove that if x comma y belong to R1 intersection R2 and y comma z belong to R1 intersection R2, then x comma z must belong to R1 intersection R2. That's what we want to prove, right? That's why I'm considering that x comma y belong to R1 intersection R2 and y comma z also belong to R1 intersection R2. Since R1 is transitive, we know that R1 is an equivalence relation, therefore R1 is transitive, right? If R1 is transitive, then x comma y belong to R1 and y comma z belong to R1 implies x comma z belong to R1, right? And we also know that R2 is transitive, therefore if x comma y belong to R2 and y comma z belong to R2, then I can say that x comma z belong to R2, isn't that so? It is clear that x comma z belong to R1 and x comma z also belong to R2. Therefore, we can say that x comma z belong to R1 intersection R2. If x comma y belong to R1 and R2, if y comma z belong to R1 and R2, then obviously x comma z also belong to R1 and R2. Therefore, it is clear that x comma z belong to R1 intersection R2. If x comma y belongs to R1 intersection R2 and y comma z belong to R1 intersection R2, then this means x comma z belong to R1 intersection R2. Therefore, R1 intersection R2 is transitive. Hence, we can say that R1 intersection R2 is an equivalence relation because all the three properties are satisfied. R1 intersection R2 is reflexive, R1 intersection R2 is symmetric and R1 intersection R2 is transitive. Therefore, it is clear that R1 intersection R2 is an equivalence relation, right? Now, let's try to prove why it is the case that R1 union R2 is not an equivalence relation. Let me tell you that R1 union R2 need not be an equivalence relation when R1 and R2 are equivalence relations. We will see this with the help of an example. Let's say we have set A which consists of these elements 1, 2 and 3. R1 is a set which consists of these ordered pairs 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 2, 2, 1. And R2 is an equivalence relation which consists of these ordered pairs 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 3, 3, 2. It must be well noted that R1 and R2 are equivalence relations. You can verify this, right? Now, what is R1 union R2? R1 union R2 must consist of these ordered pairs 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2. Now, let me tell you that R1 union R2 is reflexive and symmetric, but it is not transitive. You can see that 1, 2 belongs to R1 union R2, 2, 3 belongs to R1 union R2, but 1, 3 does not belong to R1 union R2. It is clear that R1 union R2 need not be an equivalence relation when R1 and R2 are equivalence relations. Therefore, option C is the correct option, right? That is, R1 union R2 is not an equivalence relation. R1 intersection R2 is an equivalence relation. Fine? Now let's discuss problem 2. Let S be a set of n elements. The number of ordered pairs in the largest and the smallest equivalence relations on S are what? This question has been asked in gate 2007. You have to identify the correct options out of these options. Okay? I would encourage you to pause the video for a while and try to answer this question on your own. I hope you're done. Okay, let's move on to the solution. It is given that S is a set of n elements. Okay, the number of ordered pairs in the largest and the smallest equivalence relations on S are what? We have to identify the number of ordered pairs in the largest equivalence relation and the number of ordered pairs in the smallest equivalence relation. Let's first identify how many ordered pairs are there in the smallest equivalence relation on S. An equivalence relation must be reflexive, symmetric and transitive. We know this already, right? A reflexive relation is also symmetric and transitive relation. We know that. A reflexive relation is also symmetric and transitive. Every equivalence relation must at least include all pairs of the form A, A, where A belongs to some set, right? There is no doubt about this that every equivalence relation must at least include at least include all pairs of the form A, comma A. R is defined on a set of n elements. Let's say that R is defined on set S, which consists of these elements. Then R must include all pairs 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3 and so on up to n, n. 
because R is defined on set S, which consists of these elements 1, 2, 3, up to N, then R must include all pairs of the form 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, up to N, N. If we want to say that R is an equivalence relation, and if we want to say that R is the smallest equivalence relation, R must include all pairs of this form. Therefore, the smallest equivalence relation is a reflexive relation. There is no doubt about this. Every equivalence relation must include at least all the pairs of the form A, comma A. We know that an empty relation is not an equivalence relation. An equivalence relation must include all pairs of the form A, comma A. This is mandatory. Therefore, the smallest equivalence relation is a reflexive relation. It is clear that the size of the smallest equivalence relation is N. We know that R is defined on set S which consists of N elements. R must include all these pairs, right? And we can see that there are total N such pairs. Therefore, the size of the smallest equivalence relation is N. The largest equivalence relation includes every possible pair of A cross A. There is no doubt about this. Therefore, the largest equivalence relation must include N square elements. So, it is clear that option B is the correct option here, right? N square and N. The number of ordered pairs in the largest equivalence relation is N square and the number of ordered pairs in the smallest equivalence relation is N, right? It is clear that this option is the correct option. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation.